Gentleman over there? Yeah, there he is. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for our, our witnesses for coming here today. I think one thing that gets confused a lot uh, when we have these, these hearings is that there are allegations um, that Democrats and President Biden uh, don't want to secure the border, want open borders. In fact, some have, my friends on the other side of the aisle have said that, in fa that they are trying to facilitate the fentanyl trade uh, and fentanyl from coming into the country. But the irony, and, and my colleague from Texas, Mr. Fallon, said this at the end of his five minutes, is he questions whether or not uh, the Biden administration is serious about addressing the problems at the border. Well, it's quite ironic because right now, this very day and for the last five weeks, the Biden administration, the White House, and Secretary Mayorkas have been negotiating with a bipartisan group of senators to actually address the problems at the border. But you know who hasn't been involved in that? House Republicans. And instead, what they are doing, as you just heard from Ms. Green, is trying to impeach Secretary Mayorkas for his failure to address the border while he is negotiating to address the border. And then, even if there is a bipartisan agreement in the Senate, the Republican leadership in the House has already determined that it is dead on arrival. They haven't seen the agreement, but they just know that it's dead on arrival. Does that, Mr. Beer, sound to you like someone or some party or some group of people who are trying to address the problems at the border? Look, this administration has been trying from day one to get attention of Congress to try to pass immigration legislation, and they've gotten no takers. Because, am I correct, Mr. Beer, that the fundamental core problems that uh, cause the, uh, some of the issues at the border require legislative fixes? They cannot be done through solely executive action. Is that correct? Absolutely. They, they need new authorities to deal with the legal immigration system in particular. Now, Mr. Edlaw, I know you, you ran uh, USCIS, um, and you've testified about how the uh, backlog of asylum applications is, is a significant problem um, because it incentivizes uh, even those who may not qualify to try to come here because they would be able to stay for years. Is that a, a fair assessment of the concern about the backlog of the asylum applicants? That was not what I was saying about the affirmative asylum applicants, but as far as defense of people coming across, yes, they get, they get to come in, they'll eventually get work authorization. Actually, under some of these regulations, they get it very quickly. Well, but regardless of, of when they get it, they apply for asylum, and it takes years, right? And so you, you would agree with me that fewer than 50% of asylum applicants are granted asylum when their case is finally heard. Is that right? It, it, again, I'm, I'm not sure. Are we talking about the people coming in from the border, or are you talking about total? Because those are different numbers. Well, I'm talking about the total. But the point is, is that there's a backlog, and as the head of USCIS, do you think that 1,600 more asylum officers to process asylum applications would help to reduce the backlog and therefore uh, not incentivize more people to come? If those officers were going to be placed for affirmative asylum applications for people who have been in the pipeline for a number of years, yes. However, Great. that is because not you know what, what was in the President Biden's supplemental seven hundred and fifty five million dollars for USCIS to hire sixteen hundred asylum officers to go through the backlog. Now, Mr. Homan, do you think that it would be helpful to hire additional CBP officers, Border Patrol agents? or border processing coordinators so border patrol agents can do their job and try to secure the border and fight drug trafficking and human trafficking coming over the border. Would those additional officers have helped you when you were heading that department? Hiring more officers to process more quickly, release more quickly. I'm not, asking about, people. I'm not asking about what I asked. I asked separately about CBP officers, HSI officers, border patrol agents, security enforcement officers, would that help to secure the border? If you, 
This is not a resource issue. It's a policy issue. I, I, that's not my question. My question is, would it be helpful? Would it be helpful? The of course, answer, of, of course, course having more border choice is always helpful. Uh, exactly. And yet, this Republican Party does not want to add $4.46 billion that was in the President's supplemental appropriations request to go to the Customs and Border Protection to fight the fentanyl trade, to fight human trafficking, to try to take away the American-made guns from the cartels who control both and this just, Republican just a minute. Party will We're, we're going to have a hard time here because we are going to, uh, just so we know, we are going to wind up on the floor here, so we want to squeeze in as many people as possible. Uh, 